This is Marketing Without the Marketing. I'm your host, Michael Bosey. Welcome to my show. Glad that you're here. And I thought I'd start just by saying, hey, look, I'm going to take a little break through the rest of August. Um, Plan to be back mid to late September. Let's see, looking at the calendar, probably we'll publish again on maybe September 23rd, maybe the 30th. Anyway, end of September. And I was thinking that since this episode will sit at the top of my feed for a while, it might be the very first thing that new listeners see. This is a strategy that anyone should think about in their own content strategy, right? What does a feed, like a blog, videos, podcast, social stream, what does that feed look like to someone who's new to you, especially if it's going to lay dormant for a little bit? What's the first thing that someone might see? In blogs, sometimes you can put a, uh, what's called a sticky post. Uh, so you, you sort of pin one to the top. And of course, you can do that in various social channels. You can do it in Twitter where you pin a post or your Facebook page, or uh, I believe you can do that in LinkedIn as well. Something to think about, right? So given this, I thought I'd do two things here with this episode. Number one, do a rundown of the top five episodes this year, just so that, hey, look, you can get right to the good stuff if you're new, the good stuff being what you, my listeners, voted on uh, with your downloads. And two, to thank all of you who have been listening all along for actually making these things the top five episodes, Right, Looking at the data like this tells me what you like, helps me adjust the show to your tastes, your needs. And plus, you know, for current listeners, it gives you a chance to go back and re-listen to these top episodes now, maybe through a different lens, right? Because they represent maybe what's important to small business owners of today. And I can tell you that marketing has changed in the past five years alone, right? Running a website, publishing a blog post, sending email newsletters, posting the social, the rules have changed dramatically. And if you're still running your marketing program like it's 2014 or even 2009, you can see things starting to shift. For instance, social does not have as much impact. Blogs are different now. Email is still the king of conversion, but you have to do it differently now. It's time to up our game, change things up, right? And if you're a regular listener, you know that this is the stuff I've been talking about over the past few months in my series, Content Marketing 201. So let's hit the list, right? Because I can see from the data that this is what's important to you. And again, I thank you for even creating enough data to to give me that point of view. (laughs) <laughs> All right, so here are the top episodes of 2019 so far, uh, the most downloaded episodes, which is how we measure podcasts. And up front, I'll state, you know, I've left links in the show notes to make this super easy for you. Or here's the thing, you can just scroll back in the feed of your podcast app. All of these episodes are within the recent past, so you can just scroll back a little bit and you'll be able to find, you know, any one of these episodes. Number one on the list, an episode called Beyond Getting Traffic, Web Strategy 201. This was episode number 146. And I can guess why this was so popular because, look, we're obsessed with getting traffic to our websites. And I want to challenge that concept because, let's face it, random traffic doesn't do a lot for you, right? And my Web Strategy 201 is going beyond the concept of traffic as a goal and making your site much more active in the sales process by putting people on what I call a pathway. Number two, an episode called Creating a Pathway to Purchase. There it is, Web Strategy 201. Uh, This one is episode number uh, 148, and it deals with how we handle it when a visitor arrives at our site, right? Getting a pathway set up for them so that they don't just show up and leave, right? This pathway guides them from that first visit through maybe dozens of points of contact until they actually become a customer. And here's the thing about this uh, and why I'm sure this was popular is that, look, if this isn't all set up in advance, 
web, blog, social, email, online store. There's actually a little point in getting traffic to your site, right? That traffic is going to come and it's going to go and they're not going to come back uh, if you don't give them a reason to do so. And this pathway helps with that. Number three, episode number 145 called More Than Just a Showroom, Web Strategy 201. So everyone is really, really psyched about this, the, you know, looking at your website in a different way. The top three episodes were all from that little mini series. And well, let's face it. Competition on the web is tough, right? You can't just put a website up and expect people to show up. Uh, it's not good enough anymore. It needs to function again as a pathway per, for, for prospective customers. And this whole episode is about how to make your website carry more of the sales load for you, not just be a place where people show up and, and view it as if it were a showroom. Now, as I mentioned, all three of these so far, we're in this little mini series called Web Strategy 201, but this is all part of a larger series, a 15 part series on what I call Content Marketing 201, uh, which is trying to go beyond the basics, um, you know, where people are using content marketing now. It's now mainstream. Everyone's kind of relying on the same set of tactics which means that it's harder to stand out. So instead of the 101 course that you see everywhere on the web and including a lot of the content that I've done, I wanted to go beyond that, uh, beyond the basics and do the 201 course, if you will. Okay, back to the list. The fourth most popular episode of 2019 was an episode called Build, Connect, Optimize, The Three Stages of Good Marketing, episode 141. And here was my take on, you know, just from working with a variety of small businesses across a wide variety of sectors over the past five, six years, a pattern has emerged. And to me, this pattern shows itself in three distinct stages of a growing business, and to me, you should match some activities in your marketing plan to these stages, right? So those stages are uh, build, connect, and optimize. Number one, build. In other words, get a foundation and get a funnel up and running. Two, connect. Do your outreach to fill that funnel. And then three, optimize, which is to measure and tweak that whole thing into efficiency. And what I do in this episode is take a look back over the past number of projects that I've done and see how this uh, this sort of pattern, uh, how I've applied it to recent projects, just so you can see how that works. All right, number five, an episode called The One Word That Diminishes Your Work. This was episode number 142, uh, has gotten quite a response because a lot of people recognize this one word in the language that people use. Sometimes people use it intentionally, sometimes they use it unintentionally, uh, but either way, it serves to undervalue your expertise, your experience. Uh, it's a way to pay you less than you're worth or not pay you at all. It's a way to sell you on doing something you don't want to do. This word, I'm going to leave you in suspense. Check the show notes uh, or click through on the episode. Uh, but once you hear it, you will not be able to stop hearing it. Sorry for that, <laughs> but also I'm trying to remove this one word from my vocabulary. So again, we'll leave you in uh, in suspense. And even though I know that's a little annoying. All right. Uh, that was definitely a rant uh, in this episode. And you know what? Just one more rant for good measure. This one, I don't think was number six. I think it was on the top 10 anyway. Uh, but uh, the episode was called The Internet is One Big Rickroll Now. And this was episode number 143. And this was my rant about how the promise of the internet has been ruined by advertising because there's no article you can read, no video you can view, no social feed you can scroll through without being interrupted by some advertiser's desperate attempt to steal your attention. Every time I experience this, I feel like I've been rickrolled and I feel like, like the title says, that the internet ruined by advertising is now one giant rickroll. Again, if you don't know what rickrolling is, uh, check the show notes on this or listen to the episode. 
These two episodes were both rants and seemed to get a lot of attention on Twitter and all that. I think this just sort of made people think about, um, you know, just a different lens on this, which is, hey, look, that's the point of this. If that happens, that's awesome. And I appreciate uh, your reaction to this and uh, and also that people <laughs> seem to like the rants. So, OK, you know, maybe I'll do some more rants in, in the future. Uh, sometimes I can't help myself. So. All right. Next up. In the series, when I return, I'm going to get into email. Yes, I'm going to do social media too, but email is so much more important. I got three episodes in this mini series planned for email marketing 201. We'll start with some simple automation. The second one will be on segmentation. Really important if you're running an email list. And then the third one, uh, intermediate strategies on automation. But let me know if there's something you want me to talk about. I love to create episodes based on listener questions. It's often a really, really great starting point because you're telling me what you want to know. And often those things, because I have very smart listeners like you, they tend to be really good questions and things that I haven't covered yet and uh, where I can give you strategies that I've used in the field with clients in my own content strategy too. All right, that'll do it. Again, thank you as always. I really do appreciate your attention, sticking with me uh, through the rants and non-rants, commenting when you are so moved uh, to do so, uh, giving me encouragement, criticism, uh, and keeping me motivated to continue doing this show. I do it for you. All right. Enjoy the rest of your summer, and I'll see you soon.